Kumusta generally for their experience in public service and proven service records? On reports that Marcos asked President Rodrigo Duterte to be his next drug czar, Cruz Angeles says there were no formal offers given. But if the president would want the role, she says he would definitely be considered. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea previously said he isn't sure whether President Duterte is open to accepting a drug czar position in the next administration. Marcos is expected to announce more cabinet nominees in the following days. As for the inauguration of the president-elect, the Marcos camp said they were still in the process of making crucial decisions. Earlier in the day, ambassadors from the European Union, United Kingdom, France and Singapore paid a courtesy visit to the president-elect and discussed plans to further strengthen ties with the Philippines. Back to you, Pia. Yeah, Chrissy, can you tell us more about what uh, the discussions were like in uh, president-elect Marcos's meetings with the ambassadors? Yes, Pia. The British ambassador first discussed to uphold maritime ties with the Philippines. We currently have a few British uh, vessels in the region. We will build on that. Our carrier strike group will be back to this part of the world in 2023. And we'll continue to work with um, all partners interested in maintaining the international maritime law and UNCLOS and the 2016 arbitral award as we move forward in the years to come. The Singaporean envoy, meanwhile, said Singaporean businesses are keen on seeing reforms for the country to attract investors. The French ambassador, on the other hand, discussed plans to celebrate the Philippines' 75-year relations with France, while the EU ambassador discussed development cooperation, including support for the peace process in Mindanao, as well as trade, disaster prevention, rule of law, good governance, and human rights. Back to Pia. Chrissy Dimatulak, they're recording from the Marcos headquarters in Mandaluyong. The Duterte administration's Build, Build, Build program will stay as a priority of incoming Public Works Secretary Manuel Bonoan. Bonoan says he will prioritize high-impact projects out of the more than 100 unfinished projects of the Duterte administration. He says he will also engage in public-private partnerships. In these difficult times of financial uh, uh, um, problems, I think we have to be very selective so that uh, we, we have uh, the right projects that put the down actually and have the impact, immediate impact to support our economic recovery. We will uh, continue quite actually to look into uh, the, the flooding problems, uh, in uh, particularly in uh, the rock centers, Metro Manila, Davao, Cebu, and other, other growth centers in, in uh, the country. And then look uh, what immediately we can uh, undertake to mitigate these flooding problems. Uh, um, this is one of the core functions also of uh, the uh, Department of Public Works and Highways. So uh, certainly there have been um, uh, master plans in the, uh, in the major river basin. Bonoan was Public Works Undersecretary during the Arroyo and Estrada administrations. He is now President and Chief Executive Officer of SMC Tollways. The outgoing and incoming teams under the office of the vice president are now preparing for transition talks. Vice President Lenny Robredo has responded to Vice President-elect Sarah Duterte's letter requesting for an initial meet meeting. In a letter, Duterte congratulated Robredo for her achievements as vice president. She also sought a virtual discussion between their teams on protocols, policies, precedents, and other matters about the office. In response, Robredo also congratulated Duterte on her proclamation as the next vice president. She said her team is ready to answer questions about the office and take all the necessary steps for a smooth transition. The Duterte administration's security cluster is hoping its successor will continue to prioritize the armed forces modernization. National Defense Public Affairs Chief Arsenio Andalong says the country needs more security assets particularly for territorial defense. While in social services, officials believe addressing rising cases of teenage pregnancy should be a priority. Once a child gives birth to a baby, automatically, wala siyang trabaho, uh, magkakaroon na naman ng uh, problema kung saan kukunin ang pagkain. So, ang, ang program na to, and we are really asking the next administration to look into it because this will at least, if uh, we could be able to minimize this uh, problem, then we could cut the uh, 
cycle of poverty. Unti-unti na natin na lapitan yung tinatawag na credible defense posture natin na kung saan na natin kayang patrolan talaga ang lahat ng dako ng Pilipinas. Ano? Halos nandun na tayo pero malayo pa. Ano? So yan ang pinaka-importanting programa na nais namin ilapit sa dadating na kalihim. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea reveals President Duterte is almost done packing his personal things in Malacanang. Medialdea says Mr. Duterte began packing months ago. So far, the transition teams for the outgoing and incoming administrations have met just once. For now, Medialdea says they're focusing on determining the venue for the inauguration. Medialdea heads the Duterte administration's transition team. Coming up on Newsnight, officials are preparing to repatriate Filipinos from Sri Lanka because of a crippling economic crisis in the South Asian country. Plus, Filipino talent shining bright once again at the prestigious Khan Film Festival. Stay tuned to CNN Philippines. Land Bank has always believed that in this country, we have to dream big. And so we learned to build something out of nothing. Bombo Marcos names more key appointments in his incoming cabinet. Broadcaster Erwin Tulfo will become social welfare secretary. Tulfo vowed to work hard to address the needs of the poor. Tulfo is the younger brother of Senator-elect Rafi Tulfo. The Tourism Department welcomes the appointment of Liloan Cebu Mayor Cristina Frasco as its new secretary. The DOT says it is ready to brief Frasco on some of the agency's COVID recovery programs during the turnover. Banco Central Assistant Governor Amena Pangandaman officially accepts the invitation to become the next Budget and Management Secretary. She pledged to craft responsive policies that will aid the country's pandemic recovery efforts. Other nominations include former Manila Representative Maria Zenaida Angping as Secretary of the Presidential Management Staff or PMS and IT law expert Ivan John Uy as DICT Chief. Senate Majority Leader Mig Zubiri reveals President-elect Bombo Marcos sought help from him and House Majority Leader Martin Waldes on crafting a legislative agenda ahead of his first State of the Nation address. Zubiri says the meeting happened during Marcos's proclamation last week. And we promised, we committed to him. And I told him, boss, maging, speak, uh, maging SP man ako o hindi, tutulong pa rin ako, so I will help. While Romaldez has emerged to be the next Speaker of the House, it is a tight race at the Senate. Zubiri, Chis Escudero, and Win Gachalian are gunning for the top post. Asked if their meeting means he has gained Marcos's endorsement, Zubiri said he does not want to sound presumptuous, but he sees the Senate presidency as a race between him and Cynthia Villar. Since it's a numbers game, gabi yung sniping, gabi yung sniping, yung poaching, yung tawagan in the midnight hour. So, ang importante dyan, what I'm trying to do is trying to get a consensus from all. 
Eventually, mag-uupo po kami ni Ma'am Cynthia, mag-uusap po kami, and then we will see what is best for the supermajority. Five appointees of outgoing President Duterte face a possible bypass by the Commission on Appointments with their confirmation hearings reset yet again. The appointees are COMLEC Chairman Saidamen Pangarungan and Commissioners George Garcia and Amy Neri, Civil Service Commission Chairman Carla Nograles and Commission on Audit Chairperson Rizalino Rizalina Hustol. Senate Majority Leader Migzabiri floated the idea of giving President-elect Bombong Marcos a free hand to choose officials of these constitutional bodies. Many of my colleagues feel that maybe it is, or it should be, the choice of the new president, uh, Madam Chair, particularly in the appointments of these constitutional officers. A position of seven years, he means being this new president with a mandate of 31 million votes will not even be able to appoint the head of the COA until even up to the last day of his term. The uh, Senator Coho Pimentel says each appointee should be considered on a case-to-case -case basis. The CA received one formal complaint each for Garcia and Neri and three against Pangarungan. Senator Franklin Dulon says he will ask questions of Neri about her supposed deal involving, allegedly, a drug lord. The committee tackling the nominations will meet again on Wednesday. If there is no action on their appointments, all five officials will have to step down on Friday, June 3rd, when the 18th Congress adjourns. Comics, uh, Commissioner Garcia says he remains hopeful while others refuse to comment for now. In other news, the government is preparing to repatriate hundreds of Filipinos in Sri Lanka, a South Asian country now crippled by an economic crisis. Philippine officials say assistance is underway for their immediate needs and for those planning to come home. Our, our Tristan Adal reports. Hundreds of Filipinos are now starting to feel the impact of the economic crisis in Sri Lanka. Some of them are struggling to make ends meet amid skyrocketing prices of basic commodities. The situation has sparked daily protests in the island nation as a South Asian country, for the first time in its history, has failed to pay its debts that fall due. The crisis is a combination of decades of financial mismanagement worsened by allegations of corruption, the COVID-19 pandemic, and the war in Ukraine. Close to 600 Filipinos are working and living in Sri Lanka. Daily po, mayroon po nangyayari na protesta. Uh, kaso nga lang, nangy uh, mayroon na pong tirgasan at saka yung pag, uh, ano po si, pagbubumba po nila ng, ano, ng, uh, ng tubig. Uh, pero malayo po sa, sa uh, aming tinitirhan, sir. The country is also low on food, fuel, and essential items like medicines, pushing prices of basic goods to an all-time high. Yung mga Ibang rice, uh, yung 100 rupees, naging 200 rupees na po siya, sir. Mm -hmm. So yun, at tapos sa sugar, uh, na 150, naging 300. Sa so, mga supermarket po dito is nabukubusan yung mga pagkain sa shelves. Tapos ano din po, uh, yung sa mga gulay naman po, yung store ng gulay, ilan ilan na lang po yung, yung mga gulay. The Foreign Affairs Department says it is prepared to bring Filipinos home immediately. The Philippine Consulate in the capital, Colombo, and the Embassy in Dhaka in Bangladesh are closely monitoring the situation in Sri Lanka. Overseas Workers Welfare Administration Chief Hans Kakdak says the agency is preparing a list of those who want to be repatriated and possible financial assistance to those in need. And in the face of a record high debt because of the pandemic, what are the chances that the Philippines will go the way of Sri Lanka? Think Tank Ibon Foundation says the path is highly unlikely for the country. An analyst adds Sri Lanka and the Philippines are on different directions in terms of economic growth. So you add a factor of uh, government uh, mismanagement. So here we can probably uh, take into account the alleged corruption and cronyism by the Rajapaksa administration. Uh, those, uh, all of those things contributed to uh, what is going on in that uh, uh, South Asian country. Uh, in terms of the likelihood of that uh, happening in the Philippines, I think the chances are remote. Analysts say that the strong remittances from OFWs, the revenues from the BPO industry, and foreign investments can prevent a Sri Lanka-like scenario to happen in the Philippines. Tristan Udalo, CNN Philippines. 
Search and re rescue efforts are still underway for seven fishermen who went missing in Palawan. The Coast Guard says it is working double time with the armed forces to find the fishermen whose boat collided with a cargo vessel off Maracanao Island on Saturday. Coast Guard spokesperson Armand Balillo says they will also check neighboring coasts. While vessels in the area were advised to inform the PCG of possible sightings of the fishermen, authorities are checking whether the fishing vessel had engine problems. A lawmaker is calling for a probe into the nearly 844 billion pesos worth of losses of the social security system, or SSS, last year. Senator Francis Tolentino filed a resolution to find out the financial standing of the insurance agency and whether it could continue providing benefits to its members. SSS President and CEO Michael Regino earlier explained the increase in net loss was because of changes in accounting standards. He said it does not impact the capability to give social security benefits. In COVID-19 headlines, the Octo Research Group sees a very slow rise in cases in Metro Manila. The average daily infections in the capital region from May 23 to 29 was 74, slightly up from 72 the week before, while the reproduction number or the number of people a COVID-19 patient can infect rose to 1.08 from 1.02 percent. Okta says it is still too early to determine whether the uptick will stop or continue in the coming weeks. As COVID-19 cases remain manageable, Education Chief Leonor Briones is pushing for full in-person classes next school year, but Briones adds it will still depend on the situation in respective areas. Dep Ed Undersecretary Diosdado San Antonio says blended learning will remain on the table. Inihikayat na natin ang lahat ng paaralan na magsagawa uh, ng face-to-face uh, -face classes pero ang um, tinitingnan po namin na blended uh, may face-to-face -face na mga araw at mm -hmm. may araw na papayagan na nasa mga bahay pa rin natututo ang mga bata. Pero hanggat po pag pinayagan na po tayo ng IATF na ang lahat ng paaralan ay magkaroon ng face-to-face -face classes uh, mga ilang araw, bawat linggo ay iyan na po ay isusulong ng kagawaran ng edukasyon. Around 73% of public schools have resumed face-to-face -face classes. News overseas now, U.S. President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden visiting a grieving community for the second time in almost two weeks. Just 12 days ago, the Bidens were in the city of Buffalo in New York. This time, the two met with the victims' families in the U.S. state of Texas, where 21 people were brutally murdered by a gunman in an elementary school. CNN's Cole Higgins reports. <laughs> President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden arriving in Uvalde, Texas Sunday. First visiting Robb Elementary School, laying flowers at the memorial. Biden acting as consoler in chief, embracing the school's principal. Before walking along the row of memorial wreaths from picture to picture of each of the 19 children and two teachers, 21 people in total who were gunned down inside the school. Texas Governor Greg Abbott also stopping by the memorial, an onlooker issuing a plea. I hope that some politicians see this and try to meet in the middle and work together. The Bidens attending mass as they do nearly every Sunday, but this time with the grieving parishioners of Uvalde's Sacred Heart Catholic Church. President Biden facing calls to action and chance of do something while leaving mass. You could tell he wasn't there for a photo op. He wasn't there for none of that. He was there for the for the people who were actually, you know, the victims, the families. The Bidens spending about three hours meeting privately with survivors and victims' families at the Uvalde County Arena. It was really just all about my daughter. They were very gracious. They showed compassion. And that, that's all we were here for. You know what I'm saying? He listened to everything, and we listened to him. He shed some tears. We shed some tears. I'm Cole Higgins reporting. The U.S. Justice Department said it is conducting a review of law enforcement response during the mass shooting. Sports and entertainment stories coming up. The Celtics are headed to the NBA Finals for the first time in 12 years. While the Cannes Film Festival, a satirical film brings home the Palme d'Or, including a Filipino actress. Stay tuned to CNN Philippines.
You're watching CNN Philippines get ready for a Celtics versus Warriors showdown in the NBA Finals. The Boston Celtics won the Eastern Conference Finals, defeating the Miami Heat in Game 7, 100-96. This is the first time in 12 years that Boston will enter the championship round. The Celtics' top scorer of the night, Jason Tatum, was named the first Larry Bird East Conference Finals MVP. The best of seven final series between Golden State and Boston begins Friday, 9 a.m. Philippine time. Well, for the first time in two years, the PBA is back in full swing with the return of the three-conference format. Season 47 opens with a doubleheader this June 5th at the Araneta Coliseum for the All-Filipino Conference. At 4.30 p.m., the Converge Fiber Xers will debut in the league, playing against the Rain or Shine Elasto Painters. At 6.30, Magnolia faces defending Philippine Cup champions TNT. Health and safety protocols will be observed with Met Manila still under alert level one. Dahan-dahan namin nakipagtulungan uh, po kami sa IATF at sa ating medical experts kung pwede nang dahan-dahan tanggalin na yung antigen. Pero as of now, antigen every game day, ang mga teams, ang staff, ang mga referees, ganun din. The biggest priority is to get back to normal. And the only way we will get back to normal is to have three conferences. So balik tayo doon sa pinanggalingan natin. Before the games, the league will hand out honors to last season's top players in the 46th Leo Awards. Filipino-Canadian tennis star Leila Fernandez earns a spot in the French Open quarterfinals for the first time. Fernandez defeated Amanda Anisimova of the U.S. in three sets, 6-3, 4-6, and 6-3. The 19-year-old will face Italy's Martina Trevisan in the next round, slated for tomorrow, Philippine time. Stephen Schrock of the Philippine Ascals will not be part of the action in the final round of the 2023 AFC Asian Cup qualifiers. Head coach Thomas Dooley told CNN Philippine Sports Desk the decision was based on Schrock's performance. Dooley also denied having personal issues with the veteran national team standout who began playing as captain in 2019. In football specific fitness, he is maybe the best player in here in the Philippines. Yes. Coach, but that doesn't yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. you know, you do the right thing on the field. Yeah. Yeah, and and there with all that stuff. So I make a decision what's best for my team. When he wasn't there with the team, we had the biggest success and we played beautiful football. The final round matches tip off on June eighth. The Ascals were drawn with Yemen, Mongolia, and Palestine in Group B. Heading to France, the Cannes Film Festival has recognized much Pinoy talent this year. Filipino actress Dolly De Leon plays Abigail in the Triangle of Sadness. It won the Palme d'Or, which is given to the best film in the competition. The movie sees the super rich come together in a luxurious yacht and get stranded on an island. Dolly spoke about her character on CNN Philippines New Day last week. It takes a turn when, you know, that power, the power of these people have is lost when they get stranded on an island because they don't know how to survive. Abigail, the character I play, she's the one who is very resourceful, self-sufficient, and she finds ways to, to help everybody survive. And because of that, they look up to her, they follow her, and she takes the lead, and she's the boss. Plan 75, a film co-produced by the Philippines, France, and Japan, earned the Camera d'Or, or Golden Camera Special Mention of the festival. Two of the movie's producers and one of its actors are Filipinos. A co-producer spoke to CNN Philippines about the inclusion of a Pinoy character in the film. I guess um, anywhere in the world, there will be a Filipino caregiver, you know? So I guess that, that is, it, 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 the idea didn't come from me, to be honest. It, it was already written into the project. And then they asked, they, that, that's why they asked me to help them um, realize the, the role of Maria, to fix the role of Maria, to, to help chair research a little bit about the migrant workers in, uh, and the caregivers in, in, in Tokyo. Plan 75 is the feature directorial debut of Japanese filmmaker Chi Hayakawa. An iconic action star made his biggest U.S. box office opening with a much-awaited sequel. CNN's David Daniel tells us the top five films last weekend. Being good just feels so good. The bad guys stayed in the top five, making off with $4.6 million. Downton Abbey, A New Era fell to fourth on ticket sales of $5.9 million. 
I'm making an instrument out of spoons and a napkin holder and dreams and magic. The Bob's Burgers movie began its run by cooking up $15 million for a third place debut. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness fell to second with $16.4 million for a domestic total of $375 million, the most of any film released in 2022 so far. Your instructor is one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. Tom Cruise and Top Gun Maverick had all the right moves. The long-awaited sequel zoomed off with $124 million in its first three days. Record debuts for Cruise and for Memorial Day weekend. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And that is it for now. Join me again on News.ph at 7 p.m. I'm Pia Ontiveros for Newsnight, where we go above and beyond the headlines. Naladingit ti Agpasina, ngem lumagaan ti Ladingit ken sa em. No napintas ti panakataming dagiti minatay. No kinapintas ti serbisyo ni pagsasaritan ka dagiti minatay. Eksperto ti Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes. Babaen ti di kalidad ken personalize sa funeral services. Manipod ti panakabalsamar. Panakaornos ti Mansayag, aginga ti panakaidulin ti Minatay. Malaksid iti de kalidad na serbisyo, nakalaklakapa iti singirda, dahita ti serbisyo ti Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes. Masarakan iti Barangay Juan and Ricarte, City of Batak, Ilocos Norte. Daya and Laeng, Tricarte Park. Bueno, tumawag iti Globe Number 0995-951-1711. Kenti Smart Number 0947-808-1711. 0529 Kentilan Blinda 0776000829 Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes Crispin and Susing Funeral Homes can agaw awaten the press service in cash or installment basis. Para tedadong informasyon, tumawag lang iti Scream and shout at someone over an argument or a disagreement. Have you thrown objects in the air or hit a wall in frustration? This emotion is called anger and it is a perfectly normal feeling. It alerts us to the fact that we have been wrong and motivates us to respond to a perceived threat. But anger becomes a problem when we can't control it and it controls us instead. Today, we talk about anger management. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.
Our guests today will help us better understand what anger is and how to control it. Let's welcome our guests. Joining us is Dr. Anne Christine Guevara, who is a neurologist, psychiatrist at Bernardo General Hospital and the Los Santos Medical Center. Also with us is Richtofen de Jesus. He's a psychologist from St. Luke's Medical Center, Global City, and the Los Santos Medical Center. Let's talk about what exactly is anger. It's an emotional state that varies in intensity, from mild irritation to intense fury and rage. And we often feel this when someone has perceptively wronged you. Dr. Tin, tell us more about what happens to the body when one feels angry. So with input, a person would perceive things through our senses, a visual, smell, through the skin of what we feel, what we perceive as threat, that enters the brain as an input. It actually stimulates the emotional brain, which is particularly amygdala, which then stimulates the other parts of the brain, uh, including the limbic system, which is the emotional brain, and the other parts of the brain, like the thinking brain. And this all of these, when put together, causes responses. Now, the output can be seen externally, as in physical changes, and internally, it would present as internal changes in the different organs. Example, so physical changes would mean flushing of skin, mm -hmm. prominence of the head and neck veins, facial grimacing, so kaya makikita mo talagang galit yung tao, clenched teeth, and the tense muscles. What hormones among Dr. Tin do we release when we're shouting or screaming because of anger? Meron nag-a-activate, meron nagpapakalma. So the, the things, no, the hormones that activate, uh, these include the adrenaline, nor adrenaline, the cortisol. And these are the hormones that are released when we are angry. So kaya nagkakaroon ng adrenaline rush, no, fight or flight response. And the cortisol, in turn naman, no, it increases the usage of the sugar in the body. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng energy when we are angry. Anger doesn't exist in a vacuum and when we're mad or angry, there are a host of other emotions that we experience in the process. Tofi, tell us naman more about this. When you talk about anger, it's already a result of several processes that are occurring in the mind. So for example, it will start always with frustration, meaning there is something that you are going for and that you are unfortunately unable to get it. So therefore, you start to get frustrated from it. Now, as you get frustrated, you now try to reflect back to yourself and try to identify, do you have any resources that will then help you cope up with that kind of frustration? For example, you're going to review your capacity and then unfortunately, your capacity does not meet the requirements in order for you to cope up with the frustration, then it will also be added to the sense of helplessness. So frustration followed by the concept of helplessness will then allow you to feel the emotion of anger. So from there, as long as the frustration increases, the helplessness increases, your anger becomes bigger and bigger. And because of that, you are now going to react very angry towards the situation. How does anger differ from aggression? Anger is a mood. So it's internal. Aggression is when we then externalize the anger that we are feeling. So for example, if you feel that you are so mad, then that's just anger. But if you are already starting to get an object, throw it aside. Or for example, unfortunately hurting other people or even yourself. That is how it becomes aggression. So there are different types of anger we should all be familiar with. Tofi, what are some examples of these, the different types of anger? There is such a thing as a righteous anger, meaning there was really a situation that really frustrated you out of the blue, meaning you were unable to really see it coming. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you then give the reaction of anger itself. Now, this is the time where you really felt that you have been hurt, that you have been wrong, and that's why you're reacting that way. On the other hand, there is what we call disproportionate anger meaning the stimulus itself that triggered it is very small and disproportional towards the reaction that you are giving. So it means that you're making a mountain out of a molehill. You're making a big deal out of a small situation. So that is when it becomes quite uncontrollable. Now, Dr. Tin, what are some of the most common types of anger na nararanasan ng mga tao? Some of the most common types of anger are behavioral anger. Uh, this is a reaction no? when one 
physically reacts towards a feeling of anger that leads to violence and aggression. No? The other one is retaliatory anger or vengeful anger. Ito yung, you want to get back as a response to that. For instance, when you had a conversation and you want to get back to that person. No? So it's a retaliation. Kaya tinatawag na retaliatory anger. And there's this volatile anger which seems to come out of nowhere, easily triggered, pero very volatile. Kaya it comes down. No? A person comes down quickly as well. Assertive anger can be a healthy option for expressing anger. This type of anger allows a person to express what they're feeling in a calm, verbal manner. Tofi, please explain to us why this is the best type of anger that uh, a person should practice. It means that you're just forcefully getting your point to the other person that you're communicating with. It is effective, number one, because you're defending yourself. It allows you to really value yourself as a person. It allows you to tell the other person, hey, we have some boundaries here. I have my own values. I have my own capacity and you need to respect that. By being assertive, you're now telling the other person, I have a point as well. I have something to say as well. And from that, you can then raise whatever situation or whatever feeling you have within yourself. It's becoming expressive. There are also more dangerous and physical types of anger such as behavioral, retaliatory, and volatile. Dr. Tin, could you explain what happens to the brain when we feel these three? Persons with these kinds of anger, it's really impaired, it's decreased. So the person cannot think clearly, it's very emotional, the judgment is also impaired, kaya things get out of hand, no? Mm -hmm. uh, they cannot think clearly, and uh, they do things and say things that they do not mean. And then all of a sudden, when mood shifts, no, they suddenly calm down. That, that's where the, the thinking part comes in. Ah, may hindi pala yung ginawa ko. I was not able to manage my anger at that point. So that's how it goes, no? It's an impairment in the regulation of the connections in the brain, the thinking brain and the emotional brain. Now, anger is normal, but it can be detrimental to both your physical and emotional health when you lose control of it. More on this when we return. We are connected to healthcare. You're watching MedTalk Health Talk. many causes of anger ranging from external to internal influences but whatever the cause managing your anger is more important i'm dr freddy gomez and you're watching med talk health talk we're together in health any person or event can make you angry now there are many reasons why one might get angry let's go into the causes of the more common types of anger which are chronic self-abusive and verbal now these types can affect a person at home or in the workplace tofi can you tell us more about the possible causes of anger there are some people who could not really tolerate things that are not going their way so that's the first one. You get angry because whenever things are not going as smoothly as you're expecting them to be, you get angry. Another cause of anger is that it became reinforcing for you across time. It meant that when you were getting angry, you got what you want. It means that whenever, for example, something frustrating comes to your way, you then start to get angry and then the situation changes into your favor. Another cause of anger, of course, is genetics. If your parents are people who are quite angry, of course, then you will also have that situation wherein you can then see them and be modeled by them in the way that you are behaving as well. Another one is that you have low tolerances of your own incapabilities. So they usually blame themselves for things that are not supposed to be blamed about, and their attribution is a little bit off. And because of that, their reaction is usually an angry emotion. Sometimes we use anger to replace other emotions we'd rather not deal with, such as emotional pain, fear, loneliness, or even loss. Tofi, can you explain to us why this happens in Actually, as a defense mechanism, we have what we call reaction formation. Reaction formation means that you're going to substitute a feeling, usually the opposite of what you are feeling right now, in order for you to defend your mind in terms of becoming stable. So, for example, let's say there is a loss that you have felt because of a loss of a loved one. 
the loss is then being converted into anger because handling the anger is a more viable option, so to speak, as compared to, to handling the loss. So what happens now is that the person, instead of feeling sad, instead of feeling in touch with that real emotion, will then choose to get angry instead. Is anger a normal process in trying to grieve for a loss? Actually, it's form of the dabda, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. We really get angry in that part because having a loss is a frustrating situation. It is something that we do not want, and yet we have to accept it. You will really have that level of anger. However, it is something that you have to go through. By being angry, it means that you're just releasing frustrations that have not been processed with you. The point there is that not to remain angry. Anger can also be a symptom or response to a medical condition. It can be a symptom of depression, uh, ADHD, substance abuse, or even bipolar disorder. Dr. Tin, let's talk about this. Why do these disorders trigger anger? In depression, um, anger is actually internalized and externalized. So when we say internalized anger, the person would feel low mood, hopelessness, would have crying spells and suicidal thoughts. So they're easily triggered by the circumstances in their lives. And sometimes it can also be biological as in chronic kind of stress. So chronic kind of stress causes dysthymia or low mood for a long time. And this uh, lowers their threshold in coping with certain life situations. So they internalize that anger and turn towards themselves. Now in ADHD, we know that the key points in ADHD is inattention and impulsiveness. So there is a misunderstanding most of the time because of the lack of attention to details. The person cannot understand fully or cannot fully focus on that situation. There will be shifting of moods and thinking and focus. And because of that, no, it causes some conflicts. Another way is, another example would be adults with ADHD who usually present with lack of direction. And all of these no, causes frustration, disappointment on the part of the patient. And again, no, it, the anger then turns towards the self. Can a person who's really angry be at risk of say, a heart attack or stroke. When one is angry, again, we stimulate the sympathetic system, the adrenaline rush, you know, that it would cause increase in blood pressure, increase in heart rate, vasomotor responses would be more of differences in the caliber of our blood vessels, so whether it will constrict or dilate. And there's also the release of inflammatory markers which causes clotting. So if we will discuss this in the context of, for instance, heart attack, so kapag tumaas ang blood pressure, it will cause stress on the heart. It can also cause arrhythmias or a dysregulation of the heart rate. No? Mag-iiba yung heart rate. Mm -hmm. Some people are actually more prone to anger than others. Dr. Tin, what are the parts in the brain that are different in a person who is quick to anger versus a person who is not? Both nature and nurture factor in on how people respond to, to certain situations and causes angry, angry outbursts. So, and the nature part is the environment, how the patient or the person has been reared. And the biological aspect is the genetic part. Now, the wiring in the brain is very important. That's why other people, like the type A personalities, are more prone to angry outbursts. No? The parasympathetic system, which releases the acetylcholine, is known to be quite higher in the people who don't get angry easily as compared to those who are quick to anger. Also, the connectivity in the brain. So, uh, neuroimaging studies would say that there's better connectivity in those who are calm and collected in, in the face of stressful situations because the, the thinking brain can uh, manage the emotional brain during those times. Now, you can't get rid or avoid the things that anger you, but you can learn to control your reaction to them. When we return, we'll give you tips on how to best manage your temper. Your health is our mission. This is MedTalk Health Talk.
The goal of anger management is to reduce both your emotional feelings and the physiological arousal that anger causes. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk where your care comes first. Anger doesn't look the same for everyone as all express it differently. Dr. Tin, can you give some tips on how we can keep anger at bay? We try to have breathing exercises. If you know that you're going into a stressful situation like in the office work, try to do some meditation, or when you're already in that stressful situation, try to pause for a while, and if you can, walk around first, let the emotions subside before you face the situation to avoid any untoward incidences. And then, of course, on the background of, because we are preventive, we try to reinforce our thought processes so that when we face certain stressful situations, we're already ready to face them. So that would be trying to pause, trying to find out our triggers, and uh, develop our better judgment. Tofi, what are some steps that our viewers can try at home to help manage their anger? In deep breathing, what you're trying to do there is to slow down the heart rate that you're having in order to tell your brain that your body is already calming down. Another factor there is for you to mimic a behavior that you are seeing. We are also asking our patients, for example, to count from 20 going down to 1. What we're doing there is we're slowing down the possible impulsivity that they are trying to manifest. So, for example, let's say something frustrating happened at home. You tell yourself, okay, I'll count myself from 20 to 1 first. And then by doing so, you are now preventing your brain to become very impulsive and very intense. For those people who have inward anger, particularly those, for example, who really hate a lot of who they are, we usually let them have a certain reflection. There are certain reflection exercises, gratitude exercises, and self-calming exercises. The main goal of those activities is to allow you to have a peaceful reconciliation with your limitations. It allows you to understand that even though you are limited and flawed, it doesn't necessarily define you as a person. And by doing so, by being reconciled with who you are, you will then have a better outlook of yourself and of other people as well. Dr. Tin, what are some signs that one should already seek help from a professional with regards to their anger? When your emotions or your angry outbursts already disrupt your daily routine, affecting your relationships and your work, maybe you should consider that. Second would be when people are starting to notice no, and they give constructive criticisms, listen to these people, maybe you really need some help there. Then physical symptoms are being evident. No? You develop hypertension, for instance. No? Maybe you really need to address the underlying condition, which is having this emotional outburst. And finally, if you started to physically harm or verbally harm yourself and others, maybe that's the time you should seek professional help. But for me, prevention is always the key. So when you feel that something is not quite right with how you feel, maybe it's best to consult to clarify things, to avoid diagnosing yourself, and the intervention is given early. Okay, and with that, Dr. Tin, do you have any final message for our viewers? When emotions really get high, uh, the pandemic, the different limitations that we have on a daily basis, it's best to really uh, sort our feelings, consult another person, express ourselves, and focus on the good things so that we could avoid getting angry. And Tofi, before we go, do you have any message for our viewers? Getting angry is just a momentary reaction. However, its consequences may be long-term. We need to understand that we should not sacrifice that moment for a very long-term effect that we will be suffering for a long time. We need to understand that regulation is the key. Anger is always there, but it can be controlled. Thank you very much, neurologist, psychiatrist, Dr. Anne Christine Guevara, and psychologist, Rick Tofen de Jesus. Maraming salamat sa inyo. We want to be your partner for a lifetime of good health. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines.